Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess channel and welcome to another breathtaking chess game played by the latest version of Stockfish, the powerful Stockfish 16. Today we see the fish battling it out against another top engine Velvet in a beautiful English attack in the Knight of Sicilian. So today we see the fish battling it out against one of the sharpest Sicilians that you can play, the beautiful Knight of Sicilian. But today's game will have really, really a spectacular middle game stage. Today, I think Stockfish will break the basic concepts, the, ba the basic principles, the basic rules in chess because Stockfish, in one particular moment of this beautiful game that you see today, will stay with the king in the center, will get the king on e3, and then eventually will try to even open the position on the e-file with the king in the center, which is really, really crazy when you think about it hard because whenever we play chess, we, of course, are trying to secure the king on the king side, maybe... By casting also maybe sometimes on queen side if the position allows it maybe in some blocked out positions of course you're trying also to keep your king in the center of the board but never i think i would open the position with my king in the center and that's exactly what happened stoffish broke i think here the most important rule which has paid good attention how stoffish really played a beautiful beautiful game here play against the velvet chess engine so let's see now what happened with the white pieces the fish open with the move e4 we have c5 by velvet the sicilian knight you have three d6 modern variations d4 c takes d knight takes d and now after knight you have six healing the pawn we have knight to c3 so pretty standard lines black has now the flexibility to go into many variations of the sicilian and now we have the beautiful knight of sicilian with the move a6 stockfish goes with bishop to e3 we have e5 knight to b3 and after bishop to e6 we have reached now this common english attack setup with the move h3 uh g4 is the opportunity bishop to e2 queen to d2 we're trying of course to castle queen side to secure the king and then of course putting more pressure with the rook and queen's activity on the d file here a bishop to e7 was played by velvet uh, stockfish continues with a very interesting line queen to f3 prepares of course immediately queen side casting and also is supporting the further progress here on the king side with the move g4 and is also keeping a nice grip a nice uh, attack around the square d5 because in the knight of Sicilia, i think there are two main weaknesses first of all the square weakness that we have here which is of course the weak square on d5 and also a pawn weakness which is of course the weak backward pawn on d6 but so far white doesn't have immediate attacking opportunities because this structure a6 d6 is, is in many lines not allowing of course this knight to get somehow into the into the attack on the queen side so it's really really complex middle game many many games have been also won in this particular position from black's perspective so nothing wrong so far with black's position but it becomes really already already a dynamic position for both engines so as usual black continues with the normal plan b5 so black is many times of course attacking the queen side white is attacking on the king side and who is faster on the attack will simply win the game here we have a g4 by the fish we have b4 and now knight to d5 knight to d5 is actually I think here a good strategy for black to get rid after kingside canceling and the knight to ed2 that stoffers play to get rid of the main structural weaknesses that we have talked about now in the beginning as we said we have this weak square on d5 and also the weak backward pawn on d6 now after knight to d5 that happened and e takes d5 of course by stockfish the velvet engine after bishop to d7 got rid of this structural weaknesses now there is no weak square on d5 there is no weak uh, pawn on d6 maybe in long terms this could be an attacking motif for white but not immediately so far this uh, d6 is perfectly fine and i think this is a playable position for black because now the bishop will get also here to b7 will continue the pressure on d5 and of course as usual black is trying to make fur further progress uh, a5 a4 a3 b3 who knows whatever the position is allowing you but you keep the progress of course here on the queen side so after bishop to c8 we have bishop to d3 this is a good move by um, uh, by the fish because this move is not allowing also uh, the move f5. I think black would love to play now the move f5. If that happens, if you allow for white's perspective this move in a good way, if you wouldn't have, of course, played the move bishop to d3, then I think strategically this could be a good, good game for black. I think uh, strategically black should be even much, much better. But now f5 is not working. We simply take, you take, we take. g6 is not working because of this intermediate check on e6 so the whole tactics um is, is splashed here on the king side for 
uh, for black. So black can never push something here on the king side. I'm, I'm showing this line because many of us would maybe prepare some wild ideas g6 f5. But even if you do that, then of course you're opening also the position in front of your own king. So this whole idea is not working for black. So after move bishop to d3, the velvet engine continues with normal development. Knight to d7, maybe trying also to get the knight on c5. But the main plan, I think, is simply to attack the weak pawn on d5. Stockfish continues with queen to e4, attacks now the pawn, and now the fun starts. In this opposite side attack games, when, when we have, of course, an attack on both sides, so as we said, black is attacking the queen side, white is attacking uh, the king side, we should actually not count pawns, because what we're trying to do is in some lines, in some crazy uh, positions, to even allow your opponent maybe to pick up here the pawn on b on b4, and then of course to open the b-file, maybe with rook to b8, and then you have great attacking chances. So we should really, not really count material in this types of wild positions. So that's why here from queen to e4, also the velvet engine played knight to f6, attack now the queen the queen took now the pawn on b4 the problem is now you cannot take uh, here the pawn on d5 because you get here queen to e4 is immediate checkmate threat on h7 also an attack against the knight you have to step back with your knight in order to protect it but then the rook is hanging on a x so velvet cannot get the pawn back so that's why after move queen to b4 here velvet played a beautiful a5 but this position would be perfectly fine if white would have already castled on the queen side but stockfish never castled on the queen side so stockfish is saying i feel secure here with my king on the e-file i don't want to also castle on the king side because my structure is already here exposed my structure is very very weak because we have already advanced our pawns g4 advanced h3 advanced e uh, e4 f3 weaknesses here so many many square weaknesses already on the king side and as i said if white in any occasions castles now queenside this would be a perfect position then for black black would then have the open b if i would play i don't know something a bishop to d7 maybe get this other rook on the c file b file i really don't want to show you now every possible line but i think we can agree if you castle queenside here for white's perspective then the rook is coming on the b file the other is on c file and you're getting the tactical destroy for sure so that's why stockfish is saying show me what you got i'll stay with my king in the center show me where are you going to attack me so after move a5 here stockfish continues with queen to b3 we have a4 queen to b4 bishop to a6 after a couple of trades of bishops we have now the move c4 and stockfish is saying i grabbed one pawn if this game reaches the end game stage if you don't make anything out of your attack on the queen side here i'm much better much better especially the main goal is of course to play something like b4 and then to play the move c5 if you play b4 c5 then you could have two beautiful connected pawns here that could roll on the c and b5 that could maybe even be promoted in the potential end game so that's why here stockfish is announcing as i said if you don't make anything out of your attack, I'm, I am going here into a fully endgame stage and I will destroy you in a potential endgame. Really, really good strategic move. So we have now queen to c8, Stockfish drops back, we have bishop to d8, and now comes a beautiful, beautiful move here by the fish. Stockfish is saying, I feel very, very fine here on this particular square with my king on e2. Really crazy move by Stockfish 16. So we have now the move e4. Here, um, uh, the Velvet Engine is, of course, maybe trying to reroute the knight, get also maybe use of the weak d3 square, maybe get also the um, use of the weak f3 square, because Velvet is, Velvet is probably thinking here, even if you grab my pawn on the e file, then the rook is coming on the e file and your king is on the e file so you get also tactically destroyed by my activity so it's really really dynamic position after move e4 stockfish continues with bishop to d4 now we have knight to d7 as we said to maybe reroute the knight on a beautiful square d3 uh, if you take of course knight to e4 then rook to e4, e1 e8 is simply winning the game but now stockfish plays queen to e3 very interesting choice because if you play here knight to c5 to maybe cement the position also and get the knight on d3, this is not working because then b4, a takes b, a takes b, everything is well protected. And now on the a file, I think um, black is simply losing the game because 
uh, actually white rooks are connected although the king is stuck in the center but uh, the rook, rook activity the rook connection is also a very important middle game stage now for, for white so that's why after move queen to e3 we have rook to e8 b4 by stockfish anyway so as I said you don't want to take a takes b3 because then a takes b3 leads into a good position for white after move b4 we have h6 by uh, the velvet engine we have queen to c3 uh, we have bishop to g5 attacking now uh, here the knight on d2 we have rook from a to e1 by stockfish 16 and now after move knight to f6 now stockfish plays a beautiful brutal spectacular almost impossible move with the king in the center here on e2 stockfish plays the beautiful f4 very 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 wild stuff and <laughs> what should you do let's see why stockfish had to play this move f4 why do why you have to play this move why you have to see this move if you don't play this move i think black could have a good good also middle game stage for instance if you play here king to d1 if you are getting out of the e-file attack we will continue of course uh, the game after move f4 but now let's see other opportunities if you play here something like king to d1 then the problem is now bishop to d2 if queen to d2 happens and of course the pawn on c4 is hanging for instance if you try king to d2 then the problem is this line e3 sacking the pawn just in order to open the position you play something like rook to e3 rook to e3 obviously you cannot play here bishop to e3 because of the fork on e4 so you would be forced here to play something like i don't know king to e3 but then queen to e8 knight to e4 in my opinion a messed up game here for for white for sure so this is not working if you play, play a force king to f1 then again with the same tactic bishop to d2 queen to d2 then queen to c4 here is in my opinion a good continuation for uh for black so this is not working f4 is actually the best move that you have to play if you play of course bishop to f4 then bishop takes f6 will happen so you get the messed up position in front of the king so after move f4 velvet is saying okay show me what you got here after e takes f3 stockfish plays a beautiful king to d3 really really wild stuff secures the king really on a strange square but i'm not seeing good ways how black is going to attack now the king on d3 but now the fun continues look at this after bishop to h4 uh, and the attack against the rook on e1 stockfish ignores the threat and plays now knight takes f3 as i said stockfish is saying here I will make something out of my three versus one pawn majority on the queen side. So even this game could reach now maybe a um, potential endgame in which black is maybe up the exchange after bishop to e1. We should never forget that actually white is always here this three versus one situation which could cause many many headaches here for black in a potential fully endgame stage. So that's why here after bishop to e1, what should you do? Here Stockfish continues with rook to e1. Even if you play something like rook to e1, queen to e1, then after queen to e8, it doesn't bring you so much after potential trades of pieces. As I said, a simple c5 here for white is perfectly fine. We will get two pawns connected well, with the king in the center, with the king very, very active already here on d3. With the support of these two minor pieces, this pawn storm is simply winning here for white. So this is not working. So after rook to e1, that's why Velvet tried knight to d7. We have bishop to g7. You have to now lose this pawn. We have to rook to e1, knight to e1, rook to a8 here by play, play by Velvet. We have bishop to d4, queen to d8, and now knight to f3 getting again simply the piece into the game. So we have f6 by uh, the Velvet engine, knight to h4, getting use of this uh, structural weaknesses in black's position, weak score on g6, and also weak score on f5, king to f7, and now knight to f5, really the most powerful piece now on the board, this powerful octopus knight that's controlling the center of the board, really, really a beautiful piece here for sure for white. Queen to c7, stockfish reroots the queen, is of course trying to get the queen on h4 here, knight to e5, bishop to e5, stockfish doesn't want to tolerate also this powerful knight on e5, trades off now, a bad piece for his opponent, good piece, and after d takes e5, here we have the position that we wanted to get in the first place c5 now there are even three connected passers that are storming here on the queen side they're basically unstoppable in the game king to g6 was played queen to h4 and in this particular position the velvet engine actually even resigned so what should you do the h6 is under fire you have to protect it now you get a couple of checks we play d6 the queen gets maybe here to b7 you're trying maybe to do some perpetuals by delivering some checks but it's not working look at this we deliver a couple of checks also after this move 
uh, queen to b, uh, queen to g7. It's completely lost if you get the king on c6. Then knight to d4 is winning if you get it on c8. Then we'll simply pick up this piece. So it's simply game over, as we said in this particular position after queen to h4, the velvet engine resigned. Pooh, really, really great game. A really interesting idea in the English attack of the Nairo Sicilian. I think really that you can use this game as your cornerstone. Maybe you're preparing for a game against the Knight of Sicilia. I think this is a beautiful approach by the fish. Really, really interesting ideas. Queen to f3, queen, uh, delaying queenside castling, playing on this uh, weakness on b4. Really, really great game here played by Stockfish 16. So, okay, I hope that you enjoyed this game. I really enjoyed it a lot. Interesting ideas of the Knight of Sicilia. If you want to see more spectacular and beautiful chess games like this, check out our Come to Chess Games Play by Computer series. Here's the link of their playlist. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.